Hello everyone. This is another of a series of videos where I pick up a particular programming language that I never use and I make a game with it. This time I'm going to take a look at Low Code. Low Code is an esoteric programming language developed in 2007 by Adam Lindsay. Its syntax is inspired by Low Speak, which was used in picture of cats doing random funny thing called Low Cats. Maybe it's because I'm a cat person, but I actually still like these dumb memes. I think they are kind of cute. Thanks to the Wayback Machine, I was able to read the original Low Code website. According to the frequently asked questions, there was never a complete specification of the language. And there were several implementations made by different users with different languages, from Python to PHP and Perl. The implementation that beat them all is called LCI. LCI is a local interpreter made in the C language by Justin Mesa at some point in 2007. I have to say, while I'm not a C expert, for an esoteric language, this is one of the most well-structured C projects I've ever seen. It's really easy to navigate and it also includes a doxy file to generate documentation. The 1.2 version of the implementation completed the specifications of load code with pretty much everything a programming language needs. Operators, control flow, functions, input output. The 1.3 version adds a very powerful feature called Bookie, which is like an array that can contain other variables and even functions and other bookies. Since they can contain functions, which are called function, it is possible to define objects. You can see here that you can use the identifier me to refer to the calling object which will be like this or self in other languages. You can also have inheritance and even multiple inheritance, but I really didn't need to use this last feature. There was a final version 1.4, which added an extra feature to the interpreter, bindings. With this, you can add bindings to almost any C library to low code. The author provided bindings to libraries like the standard input output, std-lib, sockets, and string. Here's where I added a binding to Raylib and was able to make a game with this funny language. I also had to modify a couple of other things since I'm a dumb Windows user. I had to remove and replace some of the libraries, but at the end I got it to compile. All of this is documented in the readme. So as for the game, I split it into four parts. The player, represented by this leaf, the blocks represented as these bottles, the enemies, and the bullets. Each of these is a different object where I define all of the methods and functions, and then in the main file, I create new objects that inherit from those objects. Before beginning, I wanted to split the code into different parts, because having everything in the same file was uncomfortable. Since the language doesn't have this feature, what I did was to create a script in another esoteric programming language called DogeScript. All this script does is look for a comment with a specific pattern and put all of the contents of that file there. I like to call it poor man's preprocessor. Now, all of the objects have an init method. This is like a constructor that I have to call manually after creating the object. The variables defined at the top of the object belong to the parent object, and they are not inherited to the child object. Note how in the player's init method I use me, single quote, z, and the variable name. This is a way to refer to the variables defined in the parent object, whereas in the bullet object I use me has a to create a variable in the child object. If the object inherits more than once, it's important to do this so the child object don't use the variables of the parent. So about the player script, there isn't much happening here. There is a method to check for collision, movement, and update throw logic. Take a look here where I check if the player is getting out of bounds. The language doesn't have a way to check if a variable is greater than or less than or greater than or equal. But luckily, there is a way to check for equality with both same and inequality with different. And also to get the bigger number with big art of, 
and the smaller number with small r of. With this, it's really easy to imitate a numerical comparison operators. So this way, I can easily check if the player is heading off screen. In the main script, the object is created like this. I has a player, it's leak a player. And then initialize it by calling player is init player k. Okay. So about the blocks, as I call them, are represented by these bottles of zero that protects a player from the attacks. They are created inside an array called block list. So this is how you loop in load code. Set position is the label of this loop. Upping your means the variable increases starting at zero and the exit condition is self-explanatory. The interesting part of this object is the check collision block method. First, it does a bit of calculations to get the real hitbox because the texture is rotated. Check if a given rectangle collides with it and then decide what to return depending on the state of the start x variable. Zero if the block got destroyed, one if the block is still alive but damaged, and minus one if there is no collision. This is done this way because in the main script, depending on the number return, a different zone is played. So about the enemies, they are represented as the fifth star of the flag. Just like the blocks, they are created inside a bucket called star list. This part of the code is a bit longer because of the way the stars are in the flag. The stars move all at the same time to a specific direction and then they move down and they start moving to the opposite direction. So how do they know when to move down? What I did was to save the position of the leftmost and rightmost stars, which are set to the first one and the fifth one. When the leftmost or the rightmost star dies, we loop to the other stars next to it until we find one that is alive. Because of the disposition of the stars, sometimes some of the stars move off screen or they move down when they didn't reach the edge of the screen. But it's okay, I can live with that. The star object also counts the stars alive in order to increase the speed at different points in the less stars alive are. This is done with load code switch. So here, max timer is the timer that controls how fast the stars should move. OMG are the different cases, and GTFO is used as a break. The comma is used as a soft new line, since all of the cases are in a single line, we don't have to write the OMG and the GTFO in different lines. OMG WTF is the default case, which I think is, is not really necessary in this case. Finally, we have the bullets, represented as a small leaf for the player and as a nuke for the stars. These two share the same pattern object since they do the same, but with changing where they move and what they collide with. The star's bullet objects are also stored in an array, in a similar way than the other objects. As you can see here, every bullet has randomized timers, which are used to check when the nuke should be fired. So how do you hit random numbers? One possible solution could be to use RAND provided by stdlib, which local already has binding for. What I did instead was to use the same method at this brush called load tracer, which is a ray tracer made in pure load code, made by Long and Kelly. He actually implemented all of the necessary functions in load code to make a simple ray tracer. One of them was an implementation of the run function. I used it with a function that returns a number between A and B. So one of the main criticisms of low code is that it's not esoteric enough. It could be considered a conventional programming language that just happens to have a quirky syntax. In my opinion, if the language designer never meant for people to take it seriously, it should be considered an esoteric language. I like to see this language as if COBOL was made in caveman English rather than cat English. I actually like using this language. I read somewhere that when bilingual people talk in their non-native language, there's like a switch in their brain. At some point, I feel kind of the same when making this game. I wrote things like, me has a alive, it's win. 
and my brain didn't see anything wrong with this other than define a variable called alive in the object and set it to true. So yeah, that's pretty much it about the game's code. Thank you very much for watching.